One of the things our homeowners always wanted from the beginning of this project was a proper mudroom. When we started this job, they had a very small space and only one closet. Now that we have a bigger space, we can build them some proper storage. Now they went online and did some research and they found this photograph which is going to be the inspiration for what we're going to build. Now, as you can see there's a seat that's stained dark, underneath that room for boots and shoes, and above the seat a cubicle with hooks to hang clothes. Now also there is an open cubicle for easy access for things you want and a closed one to hide the things you don't want to see. They like the paint and the stain but we're not going to build the ladder. Now we have to adapt this idea to our space. So Tommy's done a rough layout here, and you see there are three cubicles, one for each of the girls, which is perfect. Now each will have their own space. And Tommy's working on it right now, out in the garage. Well, Tommy, it sure is nice to have this garage space and have an on-site workshop. Oh, it sure is, and if it gets cold, we have some heat in the garage, too, right. so that always helps. Look at you, you already got to start on the base. Yeah, this is the base that's going to hold our top. Now I actually made it out of some poplar for our stretches. I used some fur for the legs and I have a piece of MDF that we'll actually screw to the wall and I pocket screwed the whole thing together. Right. Is this the finished look? This is the finished look. Now originally I was going to have a nice sharp edge on these legs but I decided that maybe I'll ease them off just a little bit. We'll do the four corners and around the bottom and to do that I'm going to use my router with a 1 8 inch radius bit and a bearing to guide it around the leg. Now you can see right here that we're unable to make a radius with the router because the rail is in the way. But if I use this little hand tool, which is actually a hand plane, I can carefully shave away the material. And I have to be careful because this fur can really catch the wood. So I just do a little pass to get it round and then some sandpaper to finish it off. Now this base has to be perfectly level. So after making it level, we scribe the legs to the floor and remove the excess material. So now we have to check it front to back. Yeah. Right, and that's good right there, Tom. All right, let me pre-drill a hole right here. Get into the stud. Now the seat for the base will be made from some three quarter inch maple plywood. It'll get edge banded with solid maple and stained. All right, we need to stain this real dark and it's maple and maple doesn't take stain well. So right. what we need to do is open up the grain. I'm gonna just take a damp rag and wipe it over the wood and then let it dry before we apply the stain. I don't need a lot. That'll open up that grain just a little bit and the stain will go down deeper. All right, we're gonna use an oil-based stain. We really wanna lay it on there nice and thick because this is maple and it doesn't take stain well. You can see how that opened that grain up. It's actually taken it very well. See how it fits. It's Ooh, good. It fits nice and it looks good. Yes, it does. All right, now what we need to do is let this dry for a few hours before we put a coat of poly on it. Right. And here in the kitchen, you've fabricated the unit that's going to sit on top of that seat. Right. It's actually made up of a series of boxes with MDF and plywood, and the face frame is made out of poplar. Right. And this is going to be painted, so that'll work out great. Right. Now, these lower cubicles are going to stay open. Yep. And the upper ones are going to have doors on them with a panel. All right. And because this end is exposed, we have to build a panel that matches the doors. Right. Let's get started on those. All right. All right, we're going to make the styles and the rails for our door out of poplar. To hold them together, we're going to use a cope and stick method. Right, very traditional method of making doors. Right, they go together just like this. You glue that joint up and it's going to be nice and tight. There's a little bit of a chamfer detail on the inside where it meets the panel. Right, and 
Right here, we have a dado that will accept our panel. To make that cope and stick joint, we use router bits. One bit for the cope and one bit for the stick. Now we're fortunate we have two router tables so we can set both bits up at once and run all the stock through quickly. Now we're using half inch MDF for our panels, but as you can see, that's not gonna fit in the quarter inch groove. So I'm gonna make a rabbit on the back side of the panel so it'll fit in there. Right, Tom, that looks pretty good. The panel is square and the joints are nice and tight. I'm putting three coats of poly on the top to seal it while Morrow is spray painting the cabinets. Now we're just going to fasten the top with a couple of pocket screws that we drilled into our stretcher. All right, we'll get it in as close as we can. This thing's pretty heavy. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, that takes care of the end panel. Oh, yeah, the end panel looks great. All right, now we have some hardware to put on the door, a piece of crown molding up there, and I think we're in business. All right, nice looking unit. Kids are gonna love it. They sure are. Good place to hang their hat. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.